I chose this piece because I am very interested in women who make enormous contributions to history. This presentation will highlight a young, gifted, and black woman's heroic accomplishments as a prominent mathematician at NASA. Catherine G. Johnson was born in 1918 in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. At an early age, she demonstrated a God-given intellect and a superior skill in mathematics. As a very young child, Johnson loved to count. She counted the steps to the road every morning, the number of dishes there were in the kitchen sink, everything. Boundless, curious, and overall excited by calculations, Johnson longed to know as much as she could about math and about the universe. She was a gifted child and developed into a mathematical genius. She skipped three grades and started high school at only 10 years old. She graduated summa cum laude from West Virginia State College at 18 with degrees in mathematics and French. After graduation, she decided to go and teach at a local public school in Virginia. Later, Johnson became the first ever African-American woman to attend graduate school at West Virginia State University. Johnson insisted that math was not hard. She says, if you do not do well in math, typically it's because you had the wrong teacher, you know? Or the teacher didn't like math and someone told you it was hard. In 1952, Johnson got a job working as a computer at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, now better known today as NASA. Johnson worked in a pool of women performing math calculations and was commonly referred to as computers who wore skirts. They were assigned to an all-male white research team. Because of state racial segregation laws, Johnson and the other African-American women in the computing pool worked, ate, and used restrooms a half a mile away from their white coworkers. Johnson remembers everybody there was doing research. You had a job and you worked on it. And it was very important to you that you do your job. I did not just feel the segregation, but I knew it was there. She encountered ingrained sexism and racism there. She quickly learned that she needed to develop more than just math skills. She says, we needed to be assertive as women in those days. Assertive and aggressive. Her contributions to the space program at NASA were numerous. She calculated the launch window for several of the Mercury missions. On the Friendship 7, a highly dangerous mission, John Glenn refused to fly unless Catherine approved the numbers that were originally done by electronic computers. You may have heard about the historic Apollo 13 moon landing, but did you know that it was this mathematical genius that made sure the Apollo 13 returned safely home? In 1970, she published a textbook on the technical notes D5963. She later worked on a space shuttle and plans to Mars before she retired in 1986, after working a solid 33 years for NASA. However, it wasn't until 2015 that Johnson and two other women who played significant roles in the space program were recognized for their major contributions in the book entitled Hidden Figures, as well as the movie by the same title. On November 24th, 2015, President Obama awarded the former NASA mathematician, 
Catherine G. Johnson, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, when she was 96 years old. On May 5th, 2016, NASA renamed the building in her honor at the Langley Research Center, where she originally worked. Catherine G. Johnson, may I remind you, a black NASA pioneer, did not find a claim until she was 98 years of age. It took half a century, six man moon landings, a bestseller book, and an Oscar nominated movie before her fame was finally found. In spite of all these accomplishments, Katherine G. Johnson, at 101 years young, still maintains a humble spirit and works in several capacities at her local church. Math, faith, and the race to space is the story of a groundbreaking American woman who not only calculated the course of moon landings, but in turn saved lives and made enormous contributions to history. Katherine G. Johnson, hidden no more. Once again, my name is Kayla Hill. I am 11 years old, and I am a proud and committed member of the New Jersey Orators. Thank you.